Hello everyone, my name's Evan and in this video I'd like to show highlights of some murals painted collaboratively with my friend Kelzo. Each mural is site specific taking inspiration from its surroundings. This one shown in the studio was commissioned by Heineken depicting when the Dutch king came to Moss Side in Manchester. This one is hung in Barclays on Market Street in the city centre. Colliurst is going through a period of gentrification. This building is currently used as a skills solution centre and food bank. 2,000 years ago, Romans quarried sandstone here. The likes of Jimi Hendrix and Sex Pistols played at the Electric Circus Club and Scarface Al was a notorious 1920s police officer feared by criminals like the Scuttler Gangs. This building and its surroundings are due to be demolished soon. The ephemeral nature of the paintings makes the documentation in a way more important than the mural itself. St Helens train station. We were commissioned by Northern Rail to paint the bridge that connects the platforms. Dating back to the 15th century, St Helens was once very famous for glass production. The town is home to the first industrial canal in the UK and at one time over 30,000 glass workers and 20,000 miners. The footage is stabilised on a gimbal with a DSLR camera. 60% of the footage in this whole video are shot on my iPhone. With my time in London, I would like to find locations for murals and document the process of painting them. For the end of the year, I could have an art installation with video, photography, screen printing, on-site, off-site. It was the high humidity in the air in the north of England that made cotton easier to process during the industrial age, which spawned many small towns like Bolton. This old cotton mill has been renovated into apartments. We depicted the historic content of the building, the mill workers and the machinery. Today, Bolton is a multicultural town, so the Ellis Lowry inspired skyline shows the mirror nets of mosques and other religious buildings. The fact that this painting was completed in four weeks is a true testament to the technology available today. The original design draft looked very different. The messy vitality of murals spoke far more of the possibilities in urban life than the sculpture groups of post war modernism. Here are some examples of the murals Owen speaks of. For my research paper, I'm going to look at how murals fit within a fine art context. I'm going to look deeper into the relationship of the polarities between these two public forms of art. The Floyd Road mural was created to celebrate the coming together of a community who physically fought off bulldozers to preserve their street from developers. Art students tend to be idealistic. They say things like, whatever happens, we must keep going. We must keep on producing art. The discussion of who for doesn't occur. And if asked, I suppose an art student would say that he expected to exhibit work in galleries. Now I think our attitude is that having done murals, we are inclined to think that possibly galleries are the wrong place to show. They are in the wrong places and they're showing to the wrong people. They're seen as possessions and not as communication. The decay of the painting does produce beautiful textures. This section of the wall has taken on William Blake-like qualities underneath the layers of urban grunge. Perhaps developers taking such a loss could be considered mythical today. As the paint fades, so does the memory of the victory. Despite being there a short time, I discovered lots of current residents weren't familiar with the story. As for Stephen Lobb's thoughts on the galleries, they're not going to be open this year due to Covid. Cable Street in East London was the scene of a brutal battle in 1936 between the immigrant population of predominantly Irish and Jewish people against the police who were protecting Oswald Mosley's fascist black shirt demonstration. Mounted police come to colleagues' help. Battens are drawn and heads broken as the anti-fascist demonstrators resist efforts to disperse them. Painted around 1979, the mural reappropriated the battle, highlighting the struggle of Bengali immigrants of East London at the time. It represents the win to reinvigorate an active political tradition. A lot can be said for the style, colours and composition that accentuate the conflict. The concept of the painting has a balanced yin-yang characteristic or Carl Jung's integration of the shadow. Layers of meaning that still ring true today. Oldham is a mill town in Greater Manchester. In 2001 it was the scene of the largest ethnically motivated riot since the 1980s. Today, there's less of a conversation of white versus Asian, but a case of so many different languages being spoke in the area. There's lots of integration taking place, particularly amongst younger generations. We recently painted a Bengali-owned, female-run textiles factory representing women's empowerment in a pocket of a predominantly Bengali community. 
The aim of the project was to be inclusive to bring everybody together, but rather it exposed some fault lines within the community. There's a lot to be taken from the discussion, which raises ethical questions and highlights the importance of picking the right location when planning to paint a mural.